So I'm going to start with a simulation of the um, towers falling. Yeah, and then I'll be explaining, you know, the so-called little explosions that everyone thought they heard or saw. Because um, these silly conspiracy theories about the Twin Towers are really starting to get me down now because it's like the world is full of fucking idiots. Center towers were designed to withstand the impact of a commercial jetliner. Yet within two hours of the attacks, both collapse. So why did the Twin Towers fail so disastrously and so quickly? Under public pressure, the U.S. government commissions a $16 million investigation from the National Institute of Standards and Technology in an attempt to explain the structural failures of the towers. They examine the debris from the disaster, run hundreds of computer simulations, and conduct extensive lab tests. The official government report into the Twin Towers tragedy only tackled events on the initial impact floors, not the physics behind the subsequent collapse. It left the field wide open for conspiracy theorists who point to the unexpectedly rapid collapse amid reports of explosions. Nuclear chemist Dr. Frank Greening was also surprised that the towers collapsed so quickly. I watched this whole thing unfold like everybody did. And then, of course, the South Tower collapses. Uh, the top section just crushes the, the lower section. A little later, the, the North Tower does the same thing. And I'm just shocked, horrified. And I say to myself, how could this happen? Greening felt that until the mechanics of the collapse were properly understood, the fanatical rumors would simply not go away. He decided to calculate whether the towers would collapse under their own weight without the need for explosives. The first thing I felt needed to be cleared up was could the building collapse? the way we saw it, or did it actually need help uh, from explosives as some people were suggesting. I really threw myself into 9-11 research and I decided I wanted to apply science physics to studying this problem. I set up a computer program based on momentum transfer to look at each impact of each floor. Greening's momentum transfer program calculated the weight of the buildings above the impact floors. He discovered that if one floor failed, the weight of the higher floors would cause each floor below to give way exactly as seen. As the impacts were on different floors, the simulation would need to account for the differing mass above each. There were 15 floors above the impact point in the North Tower and 22 floors above the South Tower. Frank's calculations would also need to prove that the floors below each impact point would disintegrate in a manner that looks similar to a controlled demolition. I ran the program and it showed that the, uh, the buildings would indeed come down. Even more interesting was the, the computer program predicted the collapse times. The North Tower falls in 13 seconds. But with a greater number of floors above the impact site of the South Tower, it takes only 11 seconds. Once the building started to collapse, there was no stopping it. It was a juggernaut. The mass of the upper block in the North Tower is equivalent to the mass of the Titanic. It's about 38,000 tons. So there you have it for that building yeah but i know there'll be those of you you know who still insist oh those tiny little explosions you could see them on the outside yes so for you people i have another video and here lovely people is the reason why 
You saw the little tiny explosions. ...of the Atlantic, two renowned scientists, Frank Greening and Christian Simonson, are challenging the official 9-11 report into the collapse of the Twin Towers. They believe that by ignoring the presence of aircraft wreckage in the fires, the report missed the true cause of the collapse. One of the most potentially explosive metals on Earth, aluminum. Softer, lighter, and more flexible than iron and steel, it's the ideal material for building aircraft. Under normal conditions, this incredibly flexible and versatile metal is entirely safe, but in extreme circumstances, aluminum can become incredibly volatile. One of those circumstances is when the metal is molten. Molten aluminum is safe until it comes into contact with one of the most common molecules on the planet, causing a highly explosive exothermic reaction. That abundant substance is water. When water comes into contact with molten aluminum, the water molecules recombine, producing aluminum oxide and hydrogen, releasing an explosive amount of energy. Frank Greening and Christian Simonson believe they have found the answer to some of the questions left unexplained by the official report. The theory goes like this. Inside the burning floors, the building debris collects to form an insulating wall around the aircraft wreckage, creating a furnace. Inside, the aluminum reaches 1,000 degrees. At 700 degrees above its melting point, the aluminum now flows like water. Finding cracks and holes in the damaged floor, the molten metal lands in pools of water from the sprinkler system on the floor below. The theory could explain several of the questions unanswered by the official report, including the explosions heard by 118 firemen. If enough aluminum reacted in a single event, it would provide enough force to damage the steel supports sufficiently to weaken them.